Okay, so you've already seen before that if you have large samples, you can do certain things with them um, and make certain assumptions. So large, we're talking about anything that's bigger than 30. Um, and that means that it doesn't need to be um, a normal distribution. We can use the central limit theorem that you've seen already to say that the mean is normally distributed if the sample size is more than 30. And we can also use an unbiased estimate of the variance if we don't have um, the population variance given to us. So here's our first example. Um, a new surgical technique is designed to improve recovery time. Previously, the mean time was 5.3 days and a sample of 50 patients who've had the new technique was taken. Their mean recovery time was five days with an estimated population variance of 0.4 squared. Is there any evidence of an improvement at the 2% significance level? Okay, so first of all, we know that um, n is larger than 30, so we can um, make some assumptions about the mean being normally distributed by the central limit theorem. So our null hypothesis is that the mean is 5.3, that it hasn't there hasn't been any difference. And our alternative hypothesis is that the mean is less than 5.3. Uh, that means that there would be an improvement, that the recovery time has got less. So if our null hypothesis is true, we have this distribution. So the mean follows a normal distribution with those parameters. And we're looking for a less than value. So it's gonna be like this with our 2% level of significance. So we work out the probability that x bar is less than five, since five is our test statistic. We're told in the question that the new mean recovery time was five days. So if we standardize that, we get the following value. Now that one you can't look up on your table. You can make some sensible conclusions, but for us to actually do this mathematically, we need a value to say whether it's, it's more than or less than a certain amount. Um, 5.3 isn't on your table of normal values. So let's work out that value Z. If it was a 2% level, then our rejection region would be Z less than minus 2.054. So that's just reading off a, a probability of 0 0.98 um, and then finding the, the negative value of that. So we can then say that since um, our value is less than 2.054, um, sorry, negative 2.054, then the probability is less than 2%, and therefore there is sufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the new technique has reduced recovery time. Okay, second example. A production line worker inspects items and takes an average of 21.7 seconds per item. After a new lighting system is, system is installed, the times T seconds taken to inspect each of the 50 items in a sample has those following summaries. We want to test at a 5% significance level whether there is evidence that the mean has changed. So has the new lighting system made a difference? So our uh, sample is bigger than 30, so we can make the assumptions that we've been talking about earlier. Our null hypothesis is that the mean has stayed at 21.75, and our alternative hypothesis is that it's different, so we're doing a two-tailed test. So if the null hypothesis is true, then by the central limit theorem, x bar follows a normal distribution with those parameters. Now, the difference here is we don't know the variance. We haven't been told it in the question, so we need to use an unbiased estimate of the variance from the sample data that we have. We use that formula that you've seen before for working out the, the unbiased estimate of the variance. So put those numbers in that we've been told in the question and we get 1.701 and that's what we'll put into our, our parameter here for the normal distribution of x bar. Okay, so our normal distribution looks like this. We are looking for a change, so it's a two-tailed test. We want um, a 5% significance level, that gives us two and a half on either side, and you've seen that lots of times. You should know that that uh, Z value would be 1.96 and minus 1.96. So we would reject if the modulus of Z is greater than or equal to 1.96. Uh, work out T bar. Um, we don't know that one yet, so using the sum of t over n, so our average, our mean for the sample is 22.14. So now our z value is that 22.14 minus um, the mean from the distribution 21.75 and then all over the square root of the variance. 
So we've put our 1.701 in there that we worked out as an unbiased estimate for the variance. That gives us a value of 2.114. Now that is bigger than the 1.96, so that means it's in the rejection region and there is, significant, there is sufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis, meaning that the population mean has changed.